Howdy, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of From the East Side, Tech student podcast hosted by students for students. I'm not a student, but they are. Hi, y'all. I am one of your co-hosts, Kay Nagley, alongside Luke Evangelist. We had a great episode today, starting off with uh, the Arkansas Traveler sports editor, Dylan Stewart. We also had Zeta Tau Alpha's director of philanthropy, Alex Harris, talking about big men on campus. Kennedy Cavan talking some Aggie volleyball. Katie Smith talking about Aggie soccer. And then we had a short little Bean Boozled segment where Luke and I got to know each other. Let's check it out. All right. It is the week of the Southwest Classic. We are talking to the Arkansas Traveler sports editor, senior Dylan Stewart. Dylan, thank you so much for joining us. If you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and then how you ended up as the sports editor uh, at the Arkansas Traveler. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate the invite. Um, uh, So I started writing about sports when I was 17 years old in high school. Uh, originally it was about combat sports and I actually grew up in Texas, um, as well, as is the case with a lot of, um, people that go to the university of Arkansas, but I started, I started in sports journalism, uh, reporting about combat sports. I had a blog and I did freelance stuff for a while. Um, and then when I came to the university, I knew that I wanted to get involved in sports journalism. So I started at the traveler, um, as a sports reporter and eventually worked my way up to being the sports editor. That's awesome. So getting right into it, coming off a devastating loss to LSU, how do you see this Arkansas team responding? Well, so this team and even extending beyond, even extending beyond the LSU loss, which I I understand was a pretty rough loss, but uh, just in comparison to losing to BYU, it was not so much it's it wasn't as bad as a loss as the BYU one was um but the the team particularly our linemen um both our o-line and our d-line has been struggling with maintaining their composure um of course we had we had the 14 penalties uh, and two turnovers against uh, BYU And then we had 11 penalties uh, with six of those coming in the fourth quarter uh, against LSU, which cost us, uh, in my opinion, cost us the game. Um, So I think the team is struggling a little bit with maintaining their composure in these high pressure situations. And I think that this is going to be another one of those high pressure situations uh, against A&M as our games are always very close. Um, as far as rebounding goes, I think the team is on a positive track, uh, particularly with our offense. Um, but the composure things uh, with our with our offensive line and our defensive line have to uh, have to improve. Texas A&M has a loss under their belt as well with uh, at Miami. Just tell us from your perspective what Arkansas's biggest weaknesses have been this far. Uh, well, I, I really think I really think it's the penalties and the turnovers. Um, uh, and this is something I, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's, I mean, obviously it's cost us two games back to back. Um, one game that we probably should have won against BYU. Um, and one game, again, the loss, not as bad as it's made out to be in my opinion, because it's, it was against the 12th ranked team and, uh, in the nation. Um, but I think our biggest weakness is just is uh, turning the ball over um, and not finishing drives too. That's another really important thing that uh, KJ and offensive coordinator Dan Enos needs to uh, needs to work on. Yeah. So you talked a little bit about KJ. I personally love watching him play, except when it's against A and M. Uh, a lot of people across the country are speaking highly of him. He's a veteran leader at Arkansas. What are you expecting from him in his fifth season? Well, I, I think the the reason that he chose, uh, obviously the reason that he chose to stick around for a fifth season uh, is because Dan Enos was coming along as the offensive coordinator. Um, he wants to showcase, uh, he wants to showcase the pro style offense uh, to be more attractive in the draft. And I think that he's made some improvements, particularly with his accuracy Um to become more appealing uh, come the uh, 2024 draft. Um, uh, KJ has a lot of new weapons. He's had a lot of 
there's a lot of new um, factors surrounding KJ. Uh, we've got four new receivers. We got a new tight end, Luke Haas, who was on full display against LSU um, on Saturday. Uh, but he's clicked really well with all of them. Um, so we have a new offensive coordinator here in Bobby Petrino. And then as well, Danny Nose, you mentioned him. What have the returns been like on him so far? Well, Danny Nose, um, he has been able to really showcase. He's in a in a bit of an interesting um, predicament because he uh, not only has all these new uh, transfers from uh, other programs, but he also has been having to deal with us not having um, Rocket Sanders, uh, who was injured um, after our season opener against Western Carolina. Uh, to my knowledge, he's not going to be active against Texas A and M either. Um, so he's had he's had to he's had to shift things around quite a bit. But uh, I I think that the I think that the um, the relationship and the chemistry between Enos and Jefferson is something. Uh, that is going to end up being a very positive thing for uh, our season once we can uh, sort of iron out these uh, penalty issues in the early part of the season. Yeah, so we know how Aggies feel about the neutral site game. What are Arkansas fans' thoughts on it? Well, like I said, we have we have a number a number of students that uh, actually come from the DFW area. Um, I, there's times where I think that we have more we have more Texas students than we have Arkansas students. Um, so I think for a lot of them, myself included, it's it's a reason to go down and uh, visit family, uh, of course, before we have fall break and everything like that. Uh, so I think it's generally generally um, enjoyed by most of us. Uh, of course, if you ask the players, they would probably stay in Fayette. They would probably rather stay in Fayetteville. Um, me personally, uh, I do enjoy it, but I do not. I do not enjoy being in Arlington, uh, just because it is so far away from Dallas and everything else. Yeah. Uh, so neither of us have ever been to Arkansas. Want to get a student perspective? What is must see and must do when you're in Fayetteville? Must see and must do. So we have we have Dixon Street, which is like our um, it's the bar nightlife area, um, which is a lot of fun. There's a lot of cool bars, a lot of uh, great live music too. our music scene up here. I'm actually at the radio station now. Um, our music here is pretty top notch. So catching catching a show just on a whim at one of the live bars is, is uh usually what I would do on a weekend when I'm not covering uh, football. Yeah. But um, other, th- other than that, I would say, I would say going on hikes because uh, this is the natural state and we have a number of, uh, we have a number of great parks up here. That's awesome. We definitely do not have that kind of scenery no. down here. <laughs> um, continuing on the student side of things, you've touched on um, your bar district what is it like on a Friday night before a big SEC game? What's that environment like? The buzz around campus. Um, take us through that. The buzz, uh, uh, the buzz, the tension, the excitement. You can really feel it in the air. Um, yeah, particularly for me because I live, I live uh, on Dixon Street. Um, I have an apartment, so I can definitely hear all the, the uh, Razorback fans going crazy at the bars. It keep me up at night, but, um, it's, uh, it's definitely, it's, it's very exciting. And I think the lead up, particularly for the night games, I think, uh, uh, all day, there's just nonstop partying going on all throughout campus and throughout Dixon street. Cool. Uh, we're going to be asking all sec sports editors this. What is your favorite tradition in Arkansas? My favorite tradition at Arkansas would be, um, I it would well it would be calling the hogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, number one, I really like that we light the stadium red uh, before the Friday before home games. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but uh, other than that, I think those are the only two things. 
That's awesome. So shifting back to A&M, what tradition do you think of when you hear about A&M? Uh, I think of the, um, I forgot what they called already. It's the little, the little dance thing that you did. Um, <laughs> the yells. The yells, the yeah. yells, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the little dance thing. I forgot what they were called. Yeah. yeah, it's a little dance thing. I'm not going to do it. He's going to have to pay me if, if I'm going to do it, but... That's cool. Yeah, we definitely we have <laughs> the little dancers, what you could call it. Yeah, we I know SEC schools have a lot of cool traditions. Yeah. But Dylan, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we wish you Arkansas the best of luck this weekend for an 11 a.m. kick at the Southwest Classic. Yeah, best of luck to you too. The Arkansas game last year didn't leave a sour taste in my mouth. But this next segment certainly did. Hey, y'all, we're going to do a fun little segment called Getting to Know Your Co-Host. Because it's episode six, and I know nothing about Kay Nagley other than the fact that she supports a horrible NFL team and makes me wear their ugly jerseys you anytime my team you loses. You do too. Calm down. You do too. Yeah, we're going to get to know each other, and then at the punishment, I don't, it could be a punishment, could be a reward. We're going to spin the Bean Boozled uh, little spinner here and then have to uh, try out a little bean. So, yeah. so the, the thing with Bean Boozled is that it's disguised. You don't know what the flavor is. So it could be like toothpaste or berry blue or dead fish or strawberry banana smoothie, um, rotten egg or butter popcorn. So really disgusting or yeah, really yummy. Not good. And you're going to know when you get a bad one. So yeah. if you want to start off with the first question. Okay. Getting to know each other. What is my middle name? Froze. Okay. You got it. Let's so he's go. in the clear. Uh, what's my favorite food? Um, oh gosh. Um, I'm gonna go tacos. Wrong. Pasta. <laughs> Eat up. Darn. Okay, I'm gonna spin it. Let's see. It's this one. It's like the little oh, speckled one. Peach so it's or barf. Peach or barf. Oh. If I, your little half ripped, <laughs> Luke got his half ripped napkins. I'm going to, mm, this is not gonna be good. If I have to spit this out, this is, whatever. <laughs> oh good. dang it good. that was that's so scary there's so much <laughs> pressure okay um <laughs> how many siblings do i have um you have one older brother oh no you have two you have an older brother and a younger sister he's right let's go i was about to get up <laughs> all right all right when did i start at tex eggs officially or like when when was the first day i came in the office Summer, this past summer. I need a month. I don't know when. June? Uh, May? May. I'll, oh, I'll, my gosh. I'll, I'll give it to you because you gave me a second try on the siblings. Uh, okay. Yeah, there you go. It's, I said summer. That's when the internship starts. Whatever. When else? Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay. How many bones have I broken in my life? Oh, my. Eight. <laughs> Do you just think I'm tumbling downstairs? Yeah. No. I assume, like... Going to Katie High School and being the student section spirit leader, which, by the way, is such an embarrassing thing. I just assumed that, like, one time <laughs> they would... He did the same thing. He did, this is not about me right now. He did the same exact... Whatever the relation <laughs> is to being the student section leader, he did that at his high school. Hold on. So I just well. know at a big school like Katie, they totally were like, let's let her, like, practice with the football team because she would probably enjoy that. Oh and they just used her as, like, a practice squad player and just beat you up. So I'm assuming... Hey, buddy, you, I've broken two, so eat up. Oh, boy. <laughs> you gotta spin. Oh, God. You're gonna get the bad one. Is oh, the same one? strawberry banana smoothie or dead fish. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is gonna be yeah, it's horrible. It's the little speckled one. I really hope he just. Please. <laughs> We're good. Strawberry banana smoothie. <laughs> there was so much suspense. Okay, uh, your turn. What's my middle name? I literally, uh, you told me, did you not? Oh mm -hmm. God, this is a bad look. Um, Jacob, I don't know. Steven, eat up. Dad's <laughs> name, dang it. Ah. <sighs> oh no. Buttered popcorn or rotten egg. Oh, I As a heads up, I did eat this one earlier today, <laughs> and I almost vomited all over the office, so you better hope it is not rotten egg. I don't have a good feeling about this. Oh, God. Mm. Good luck. Okay, here. <laughs> We're good. How? What? <laughs> We're getting lucky. Oh, my gosh. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. What year was I born in? All right, so we're in the same grade. Mm-hmm. I was born in 2001. Two thousand two. I think you're young for your grade. Eh. Oh, what is it? Oh one. Oh, t- <laughs> it's okay. Oh gosh. Come on. <laughs> what is it? Liver and onions or cappuccino? Oh gosh. I'm following that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Not the instant reaction. Oh, oh my, what gosh. is this to be? <laughs> Liver and onions. <laughs> oh yeah, that's oh. not good. Oh. It doesn't like the flavor doesn't hit you at oh. first. That's what's scary about it. Oh my gosh. You good? No. <laughs> well, ask up. Yeah. Here's here's revenge coming. Dish oh best served as a jelly bean. What is my twin sister's name? Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're just talking about her. This is embarrassing. I don't know. Have you ever actually ever told me this? Yeah. I've told you most of the things that are on my list. I'm not a good listener. I'm learning. Um, is it like a basic name? I don't know. Oh, You're guessing, name, not me. Hints. Not after what uh, I just had to go through. You're not getting Laura. a single hint. How'd you? What? Is How'd it you Laura? Know? No, I'm kidding. It's Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the L theme would maybe happen. Uh. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Juicy pear or booger? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> please be booger. I can't. Oh my god. Why are these? Who does like came up with these? I this don't is know. like what flavor does this look like? Both. I'm really scared. I'm gonna have this ready. <laughs> I'm not ready for this. Uh uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not happening. Okay. Oh, it lingers. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, my fifth and final question. Yeah, you, you aren't going to get this. How much do I bench? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Okay. What for is reps? the most? Yes, for, reps for reps or your max? Um, f- Four reps. Okay, shoot. Can you flex for me? <laughs> no. Not on camera. I've done this for... How, how many reps are you doing? What's your... What, like, like, three by ten? I've... Mm, no. What, what, like? Like five. Five, okay. I've done this for five max. 195. Oh my God, you are putting me way, no. Oh. No. Oh. 135, just to play. I could do that in my sleep, Okay, girl, whatever. Uh. That is good for a girl, don't even. But eat, mm, no, you can't disrespect me and please, then not no. eat after that. Go ahead. I, that was a compliment. 195. Oh, I, I got this one already. It go was again, a strawberry. Go again. Oh, gosh. That's the rotten egg oh. one. That one's... Can I please get another spin? If I get no, rotten egg, I'm no. actually going to throw up. <laughs> no, you're doing it. Don't wimp out. Oh, Have the thing ready so you don't spew it across. I think this is rotten egg, unfortunately. You can't tell from the smell. I don't even want to look at <laughs> it. There's no way that it's you just that tasted bad. it that fast. It, I did. I got. Oh my lord! I just had this four hours ago, and I remember that. <laughs> well, why did you do that to yourself? Oh god! <laughs> 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 I'm gonna give him a second. Recover. Oh that is okay. that is the most disgusting thing ever. <laughs> okay. All right. It's your turn. Last how, last question. How many dogs do I have? Back home? Yeah. Two. <laughs> Actually, we're getting a new one. Three. I'll, I'll eat just to cap it <laughs> off. Whatever. Whatever. Okay. Um, oh, no, that one's not I bad enough. I already did this one. Yeah. Hold on. Or you did. No, we're going to go. No, 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 no. That one's not bad. No. no. I get, that's what it landed on. She's Very lying, blue everybody. And She's toothpaste. Lying. Actually, I don't think there are any because oh, there um, isn't any. Yeah, Dang it. I did eat the rest of them earlier today. You just like toothpaste? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> toasted marshmallow and stink bug. Please, everybody, please. I can't even tell which one this is. It's like the 
No, that's. Are we sure? Oh, this is. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. All right. This is for the east side. Ugh. I just have a really bad <laughs> feeling about this stink bug. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that one cannot be worse than I the promise other you. One. You no. need to. We're gonna go through these no. butter popcorn. Rotten egg ones until you get a rotten egg, <laughs> no, so you can feel my pain that I've had to have twice not. today. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Um, well, I feel like I ate more bla- bad flavors than getting no, no. to know you. Oh yeah. Um, well, we both had two bad flavors. Yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. But thank you for watching our uh, getting to know you segment. Getting to know each other a little bit more, Luke. How tall are you? Oh, uh, like five eleven ish. You're not that tall. You're not that big. Okay. Well, talking about some actual big men on campus, Zeta Tau Alpha is having their philanthropy event. Let's check it out. Hey, y'all. We're sitting down here with Alex Harris, the director of philanthropy at Zeta Tau Alpha here at Texas A&M. We're talking about big men on campus. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Alex, so we want to know a little bit about you, how you got to A&M, and then uh, how you became uh, a Zeta. Yeah, so coming to A&M probably wasn't even a choice for me. Um, I have been coming to the football game since the day I was born, pretty much, and we've had season tickets for about 20 years. So I grew up an Aggie, have always been an Aggie, so this was my true home. I knew I was coming here, and then coming in the fall, um, I just wanted a place to find home and a group of girls that I knew I could feel at home with, and Zeta hit me straight when I walked through the door and that was my place that was my home the girls are so genuine and kind there and I found the bestest of friendships at Zeta that's awesome what's been your favorite memory in Zeta so far definitely living in the Zeta house last year most people would think I'm crazy for living with 40 girls but it was actually the best experience I've ever had and I would do it year after year if I could We've seen a lot of, you know, TikTok, TikTok viral clips and stuff from sorority recruitment. Yeah. What, a, what were your takeaways from all those experiences? Recruitment is so much fun. And I say this all the time and Zeta say this, like it makes us fall in love with Zeta over and over again because the girls become so close. And especially during philanthropy round, obviously I'm philanthropy chair. So like that round is really touching and meaningful of the reason of why we fight for women with women with breast cancer um, and all around. It's just an amazing experience to get new girls in our chapter. That's awesome. So this is Ada's first philanthropy event of the school year. Big man on campus, take us through the success of this event over the last couple of years. Yeah, so we actually started back again um, this past year and we took like a 10 year little break from it um, and tried a new uh, fundraiser for our philanthropy, which is letter writing. And we raised $75,000 for that last year. And then the same week was Big Man on Campus where we raised about $38,000 from that. And so we're hoping to break those goals again this year and have an even better Big Man on Campus. We're super excited. Everyone we've talked to is excited. The contestants are excited. So we're, we're prepared. We're ready for it next week. Yeah. Awesome. If you could tell the audience a little bit about the event and then what happens during the pageant show. Yeah, so it's pretty funny. and It's definitely something you want to come out to. So we have 10 contestants from different men's organizations and fraternities that come and compete in a talent, an interview, and what we call like a fashion walk that supports breast cancer. Um, and there will be judges that will judge them on it. Um, and there's several different components throughout the week for the competition, like profit shares, t-shirt sales. We have our house lighting ceremony that y'all can come out to on Monday, October 2nd. We're pieing the big man in the face, having pink lemonade, a food truck. There's lots of different events that we like to celebrate on Think Pink Week, which is next week. So we'll celebrate breast cancer awareness. That's great. So my organization is actually participating in Big Man on Campus. Shout out to Jed Moore from Century Men's Society, our Big Moore on Campus. How can I support Jed and also tell all the people how they can support this event and donate? Yeah, you can follow, first off, follow Aggie ZTA BMOC for more updates. We'll be posting fun videos. You can like their Instagram posts if you want to support a specific contestant. Um, You can go to our profit shares with Mamaka Bowls on Monday. And then um, next Wednesday, we'll have one at BJ's. Um, There's several different ways to support, especially coming out to Big Man on Campus as well. And then just supporting and showing up for your favorite contestant. That's awesome. So thank you so much, Alex, for sitting down with us. Make sure to come out and support Big Man on Campus on October 5th, 6.30 at Rudder Auditorium. And you can also buy a ticket in the link down below in the story. Check it out. Thank y'all. Hey, Bees, what do you want to talk about? I would love to hear from our student volleyball reporter, Kennedy Cavan. Let's check it out. Hey, y'all. We're sitting down here with Kennedy Cavan, Tech student volleyball reporter. Kennedy, the Aggies started off SEC play 1-0 with a sweep of Mississippi State. What were your main takeaways from the win? 
Um, I think it was a really, really dominant performance uh, for the Aggies, and I think it set off a good tone. They were a little slow in the first and second set, but then Afina kind of took over control on the front line of defense with blocking and had like four in a row, I think Coach Marson said. Um, but I think it set the tone really well for SEC play. Uh Following that, the Aggies lost another or SEC game to number 11, a good Arkansas team uh, on Sunday night. What were your thoughts from the Aggies' first road uh, conference loss? Um, I think it was a good learning experience. I think that I, that's their third loss of the season, so I don't think that people should start throwing in the towel, and I don't think people are at all, but I think it's a good learning experience. I think it's um, kind of bringing them back down to reality of like, hey, like, it we are going to lose some games and especially to a number 11 ranked Arkansas team like that it's really really good and really going to be dominant throughout all of SEC play yeah even in a loss Logan Lednicki had a career high 23 kills how has she grown as a player and as a leader this season Logan has been incredible since she stepped on campus her freshman year and I think this season uh coach Morrison has been really adamant on the fact of that like Logan and Caroline don't need to be carrying all of the weight on their shoulders so I think it's pretty clear to see that the office has been able to spread out but Logan has been able to kind of step up and be a leader as a sophomore which is really impressive and against Arkansas that was just her on day that was a day that she really just I think stepped in and was able to focus in and hit a record and yeah. it's incredible and her leadership is really important to this team. The next chance to pack Reed is uh, this Sunday at 3 against Mizzou. What kind of environment are you expecting and what kind of environments have been – what have they been like so far that you've been covering this team? Um, Mississippi State was electric. It was so much fun to be there and to listen to all of it. I think that the same energy needs to be brought against Mizzou. I think um, y you can't let up against any teams in the SEC, no matter if they're ranked, no matter what their like schedule looks like, whatever. Um you, you can't let up, and I think a, the 12th man is a big part of that. So I think they all need to come out. Mississippi State was insane. All the other home games have been so much fun to be a part of, and I don't think Missouri should be any different. Yeah, thank you so much for sitting down with us, Kennedy. Uh, up next, we'll be talking Aggie soccer. We had a little change of plans talking Aggie soccer. Kylie Stoner could not make it in, but now we are going to talk to former Texas A&M soccer captain and Texag's very own Katie Smith. If you could just tell the audience a little bit about yourself and then how you got to Texags. Hey, y'all. I'm Katie Smith. Um, I came to A&M, oh gosh, in 2019 um, to play soccer here. I graduated in May of 2022, still had a year or a fall of eligibility, just finished up my master's um, this past August. Um, and in the meantime, my now roommate and former teammate, Allie Russell, actually worked at TechSags. And she told me about the social media manager position being open um, and told me to apply. Um, I applied, went through the interview process, and a few months later, here I am. That's awesome. Well, we love having you here. And we love hearing your insight about Aggie soccer. So we're going to go back to that game against Arkansas. Uh, Coach G seemed frustrated with the outcome of Sunday's match. Uh, was it warranted having outshot the Razorbacks 16-9 to and still losing 1-0? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I actually watched that game, and, you know, the Aggies definitely played better than Arkansas um, throughout the whole game. I think Arkansas didn't really have any opportunities until the second half. Um, but I just think that kind of goes to show how valuable those opportunities are, especially in SEC play. Um, but the Aggies definitely, they looked great. They um, are on the right path. And I think, you know, while it's frustrating, there's still a lot more games left. And that um, how they're playing is a really positive takeaway from that game. Ole Miss is coming up. What can you tell us about your playing experience playing the Rebels? Ole Miss is definitely an athletic, physical team. Um, they have a lot of speed up top. So, like I just said, putting away those chances um, will be very important in that kind of game. Um, and just like the physicality, A&M has a very deep bench, so I think um, that will be an advantage for them against the Rebels. But, yeah, going forward, I think just taking those opportunities and putting them away. Yeah, so Texas A&M will have seven more conference games. That could determine a lot more in the SEC. What are your early thoughts on how the Aggies are competing against SEC-caliber teams? Well, I think they started off – um, pretty strong. They had a tie against Kentucky. 
um, a win at Mississippi State, an unfortunate loss against Arkansas. However, they did play very well. Um, I think how they're playing is um, like the most positive thing to take away from that, especially when they get into the gauntlet of the SEC. They have Alabama in a couple weeks, um, Ole Miss coming up. Every single game is a tough match in the SEC. So I think, you know, just kind of having that upward momentum going forward will be very good for them. As a former captain of this team, what would be your message to the team as they continue through that SEC gauntlet? Uh, I think just keeping their head up. Sometimes it's frustrating, like that Arkansas loss, but especially knowing you played better. But I think just keeping your head up and doing what you know you can do um, will take you far away. Yeah, so uh, thoughts on Sunday's Turn It Gold night in support of Childhood Cancer for the upcoming Ole Miss game. It's a super cool uh, promotion for a great cause. What was it like playing in the Turn It Gold game in the past? And I believe you all get special jerseys for that game too, yeah, right? Yeah, you get the gold and maroon striped jerseys. Yeah, that's a really touching game every single year. Um, we have two women that run that organization come in and talk to us each year. We typically watch a video. It always brings tears to my eyes. Um, but it started about like 10 years ago with um, a player, and it was her mom taught – this girl, and she ended up babysitting that girl. They had a nice connection with their family, um, and that girl grew up and ended up having cancer. And so it was kind of an awareness thing back then, um, but the tradition had kind of just stuck with the team, and it's just a really positive thing that the team does every year. I think almost every single year um, the money raised, like, breaks a record each year. So I think last year was we broke a record from the year before. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully that – um, can happen again this year. Yeah, yeah it we goes hope to a so. Good cause. Thank you so much for sitting down with us, Katie. Make sure to come out and support Aggie Soccer and Turn It Gold this weekend. Thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode of From the East Side. Hey, Kay, what's your favorite breakfast item? Have to go with bacon. Kelsey? Same here, bacon. Yeah, same with me also. I do love bacon. Now let's cook some bacon this weekend and beat the hell out of Arkansas. <laughs>